Hello and you're very welcome to the Shows of Jamac Podcast. I'm John Van. Of course, the podcast is brought to you by orgrich.com and Attack TD. Use the local Jamac Podcast to get 15% off on orgrich.com and get the best games go to from Attack TD. Be attack minded. I'd say I'm joined by Leitrim and Shannon Gales, Wuppler, Never a Donald, to talk about the current state of affairs, uh, Shannon Gales' season so far and the Leitrim season that just transpired under the stewardship of the great Andy Moran. Never, never a Donald, how are you keeping? Good man, how are you? How are you getting on, John? All good, sir. All good. What's the crack? How are you keeping it? It's it's belting rain up here in uh, Calvin. How's it down there in it's, lovely Black Lion? It's all as sunny in the west here at the minute. Yeah, the sun the sun is splitting the stones actually here in Black Lion all day. I don't know what's going on, but uh, we we'll take it. So we will, you know. Happy. Yeah, yeah, happy days. Yeah, can you, you extend some up? It'd be brilliant. I'm only have to, <laughs> to bring the closing closing out of the line there, so herself would be uh, probably giving me a kick up the arse when she comes home. But uh, how's life, man? Obviously, you are in the uh, middle of the junior championship. So, I suppose what have you made of that so far? Yeah, it's been it's been all go. Uh, it's been hectic enough. Kind of kind of came back in there just before championship uh, with the lads. And in fairness, the lads have been putting in a massive effort all year. And, uh, you know, we started uh, a couple of niggles and injuries there throughout the league and we were kind of low on bodies. Um, a few more boys coming back in, Jason coming back in, obviously from Calvin too. Um, you know, we, we, we've been we've been happy how we've been kind of progressing. Um, look, at getting getting more and more minutes. We have a very young squad there. We've a lot of younger lads coming through. And, you know, we, we've, we've been very lucky this year that we've been able to get minutes into them and, and throw as much football at them as we can because... Uh, you know, we, we have been limited with numbers. Everyone's been getting their football. Uh, we didn't have a second team at all this year. So uh, everyone's got lots of minutes, loads of league football. Uh, so we've been just trying to build from that. And look, at we, we've, we have a good mix there of young lads and, you know, a couple of older lads like myself floating about there. So we're, we're, we're progressing on it. So look, at it's been a positive year so far. In fairness, Brian Bates has come in there from Dragoon with us and he's, he's been brilliant with the lads. You know, he's a great, great fella. Everyone knows him. Um, so you know a lot of good work being done so far. Um, you know, quiet, quietly, quietly doing, going about it, Anya. <laughs> mm, absolutely, absolutely. I know it's, it's great to see. And I suppose what have you made it maybe off the standard off Ed? Can I kind of uh, I suppose the Cavan Club Championship this year? I know you said you haven't got to many of the games, but I suppose maybe the the outgoing opinion there maybe the, the, the standard has been fantastic. But I suppose what's your opinion? Yeah, it's um, it's been funny there. Like uh, you're you're talking to a lot of clubs, like especially there, like in junior, a lot of the clubs there you, you know the lads really well. Like look, we've been there the last. Uh, since I've been playing, you know, over 10 years where we've been in that division and, you know, some of the teams are all there and you get to know the lads and you're chatting to them too. It's been it's been a funny year where teams have kind of made a big burst, some of them to come back and there hasn't been maybe the hunger in some lads to come back or else they've made a big burst early on and kind of maybe the belly has fallen out of it a wee bit, you know, but I'm hearing that with a lot of, especially smaller rural clubs, you know, it's been hard on numbers. Some, some teams have been losing lads, you know, lads were locked up there for a couple of years and, you know, they're, they're getting their chance now. Lads have taken off. They're, you know, they're unfortunately probably taking their chance now once the planes opened up or holidays mm. could be had. You know, they're getting away. And, you know, it has, it's been tough on clubs. Um, you know, it has been very tough on clubs. But, you know, they're trying to get on with the best they can there. I suppose the junior football I've been at a lot of, I haven't seen that much uh, senior games or intermediate yeah. as much in Cavan, but been around there. Like, you know, there's, there's a lot of quality there. Look, at there's been a couple of bigger teams coming down there as well. But, uh, you know, the standard isn't bad there. You know, team, teams have been working hard there. Um, there's still a bit of quality and fairness. Like I always said, I've been going around the games there, I think Fermanagh, Longford and Leach and stuff too. Like, and the junior championship in Calvin there, like, you know, there, there's a lot of teams there that are, you know, relatively strong there, you know, and have a lot of quality uh, as well. So um, I don't know. I don't know this year. It's kind of a weird one to say because, your teams have been losing lads, especially during the season too. And you've been hearing that too, where it's been coming, where things might have been going well. One or two lads kind of, you know, have had to make decisions going away and stuff. And, you know, it's been it's been harder on teams, but look, we're all in the same boat. There's nothing we can really do. You hear teams there are very tight on numbers, but um, we're all kind of trying to push on and, and, and get, get as much out of it as we can, I suppose, you know. Mm, yeah, I suppose that's an interesting question as well. And Evan, obviously, you know, the two years of the COVID, no football, you're kind of where locked away. Maybe lads gave got other pers- perspectives, and you know, lads stepping away from county panels and maybe even club panels to a degree. Evan, so you know, a lot of lads' minds, yeah. a lot of lads' minds have definitely changed. And obviously, you've skin in the game. You went traveling for the year, so it's a uh, it's a different kettle of fish, Jesus. Yeah, no, that's it. Like, look, at I came home. It was 
I came home last year uh, towards the end, end of August and we landed on a Friday and we were playing championship on the Saturday. And, uh, you know, it's been literally all goes since, but I've had a different frame of mind. You came home, you were hungry, kind of to go at it. I'd been away, I'd done me traveling. Uh, and then we had other lads as well there, you know, in different scenarios. They were looking at stuff completely different to me, like as well. And you have to, you kind of have to be aware of that you have to understand that too. Um, you know, the lads, lads have had have kind of been locked up as well. I suppose look at the people in Ireland, especially in Calvary, had a lot worse than me um, when I was away. You know, and you have to remember that too. But uh, it's it's been a funny one, like you know. But then look at some teams have pulled together really well there. You know, mm. you're, you're hearing that as well. So, you know, team, teams have, have kind of, you know, put a good effort in there, like maybe didn't get as much work in as they did last year, but, you know, they're building on that as well and, and trying to get as much out of the year as, as possible, you know. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. So, and I suppose, um, obviously, like you're, you're doing really well with Shannon Gales, and obviously, you're, you're see, you see your pick, and obviously, like rural clubs around kind of Cavan, Ireland, everywhere, just to even keep teams going, keep that keep lads motivated. It's probably a credit to yourselves to just keep the ship uh, ship sailing, I suppose. And obviously, yeah. Brian Bates is over his this year, so it's a credit to yourselves. Yeah, no, we, we we've done well. Now, in fairness, like look at uh, West Cavan, would be a lot more rural than uh, maybe the other side of Cavan. And like, you know, there's been a lot of good work done on underage structures, like not by ourselves, like we've, we have a good amalgamation set up there with Darren Creeve. And, you know, it's been working the last few years. We're getting lads through, boys are enjoying the football, they're playing at a good standard of football. Um, you know, and that's the main thing, like, you know, lads are enjoying the football and, they're, you know, they're, they're pushing on, they want to play senior football. Like, you know, that's, that's the main thing. Um, obviously, you'd like more of them coming, but we just unfortunately don't have that, you know, our... When I was lucky enough there, like I, I kind of you get to know what's coming and going there. When I've been in the working, I suppose with the county board, seeing yeah. what's going on in schools, what's what's coming with academy squads, and uh, you know, like even there, like there's a lot of clubs even around West Cavan. They're they're working really hard, but you just have to keep working with what you have. You know, we're all in the same boat in that we're not blessed with massive numbers. You know, unfortunately, if you're only getting one or two through each year, you really need to make sure that you're you're holding on to them and kind of making sure that they're enjoying their club football and that they're you know they want to be part of it too that you know lads aren't stepping away uh you know because you literally just don't have that you know we don't we can't afford that you know you literally need everyone which is it's yeah. kind of mad when you think about it but you know that's just mm-hmm. the way it's gone look at it's been hard in a few clubs like uh you know certain clubs there that, that haven't been able to kind of keep that going as well but you know yeah. it's it's going to be questions there that clubs are probably going to have to ask hard questions in the next couple of years you know, what's coming, can we facilitate this, you know, what's our next option, you know, um, but look, or, at, even amalgam- or, or even amalgamate senior clubs to a degree. Yeah, I suppose, look, at we're, we're all, we're all kind of, we're all kind of in, in the same boat that way, but it's, it's kind of like we, you're, you're, you're not going to really think about it. It's, it's, it's very easy to say to someone in a smaller rural club that, uh, you know, you'd be as well go off and, you know, think about amalgamation or think of something like that. You know, until it's your own uh, and you know the amount of work and the history kind of in the club, uh, it's very, very hard to kind of justify that and stuff. And you're you're trying to, you know, keep the thing running. Where look at sometimes I don't know what's going to happen. I suppose it's not just in Calvin. I'm it's it's going on in a lot of counties there. Like you know, it's it is going to become very, very hard to field teams as well with with underage structures and especially look at people aren't maybe living in areas now as well like you know that'll be mm. probably the biggest struggle we probably have in black lion and that mm. we have a great club we have, we, have, we have a great community of people but to be honest sometimes the hardest thing for us is the players probably and stuff don't actually live in the area you mm. know lies are living and working away but you know they're still uh forcing themselves to get home every weekend to do what they can for the club as well you know and play and make sure that we, we have a team like so mm. look at we're, we know we're not the the only team in that uh in that boat as well it's the same for everyone you know it's just location we have you know uh because mm-hmm. we're the, the far side of cabin but you know we we've been we've been making it work this long you know so we we, we reckon that we've we're still producing good players we're still kind of getting a bit of pedigree there lads are eager our schools there are, are full of lads and girls they're mad for football too so you know we'll uh we'll just have to keep keep going what we have Mm, I suppose kind of draws into the question as well. So we've seen Shane Walsh make his debut for the Kilmacud Croaks uh, lads yesterday. He came on as a sub and not a bad sub to bring on, never I must say. No. Um, but it kind of draws no. into this kind of question maybe of lads kind of having the commute and, you know, Levin, the way the kind of GA is going at the minute, lads really are getting their eyes open and doing various bits and pieces. So would the Shane Walsh thing, you know, would that example be, could that open up the, those doldrums there if you get me? 
Uh, I, I don't know. I suppose it depends. Uh, I suppose on people's circumstances. You know, like there's lads living away um, in Dublin. There's lads living in Belfast. Like we have lads there in Belfast. There's lads in Dublin. But uh, I don't know. It's it's never something that's maybe appealed to any of our lads. We've been we've been looked at. Look, we have had a few lads going away, but you know that's out of complete circumstances of living up there, not being able to travel. Like, look, at I wouldn't hold it against any fella. Um, you know, driving two or three hours there, like it can take its effect on your body. Like, but look at Shane Walsh is a different scenario there, just because he's he's such a high profile player. But uh, you know, if he feels that's right for him and his football career, like you know, best mm-hmm. luck to him. But you know, I suppose look, we we've had it hard too. Like you know, with lads uh, stepping away. But at the end of the day, when when they are living away or trying to make a life in a different community, or you know, lads just move on. But you know, you, you you'd be hoping that lads can give as much as they can. While they can, you know, especially as was in a, a smaller, maybe a, a more kind of junior intermediate club, you know. But we're we're lucky in that sense. Like, look at it, it. The club culture with us is pretty good. Lads understand that we we nearly, I'd say, eighty percent of our panel doesn't live in the area, but lads are still making that effort there, you know, to get down the road where we've been training. I'd say most of the year above in Cavan Town, you know, between uh, Breffney Park or Lavi. Uh, most yeah. of the year, you know, one night a week. That's what we've been doing, like you know, just just making it work best we can. You know, that's what we're. That's unfortunately the hand we're dealt with. But you know, you can we can give out about it all we want. But you know, lads, I'm getting on with it. Like you know, it's I've been coming back there. I wasn't around for the league. Either was Jason there. But you know, the lads have been just doing the work themselves. You know, and they're they're not afraid of it. Like you know, they're they're putting in the effort, same as every other club player. Like you know, so you can't we can't can't fault it. You know. Mm, absolutely and I suppose you can even get your kind of thoughts on like the commitment of the game at the minute and I know we kind of touched on it at the start like with lads kind of stepping away from cage panels I know obviously you and uh, Darren McFeely and even Conor Moyne in the past kind of did go travelling and take years out so can you understand lads reasons for going travelling with the commitment of the game that it can bring at times yeah I suppose and probably COVID opened that up to people a wee bit more um, look at club level is different I suppose inter-county is probably Look at it's it's a different breed. Look at lads lads want to be there, you know, they want to be performing at a high level, they want to be pushed as hard as they can, like you know, and that's what lads strive for. You know, sometimes it boys just don't want that and you know, they take a step outside the bubble and they, they see that there is more. And sometimes you have some of the best lads, you know, and, and they've given everything, but they do just want to take a year away and kinda of get out of that bubble as they say and uh, kind of see a bit and get a bit of travel done. Like look at I would have been a big advocate for, you know, Jesus, the club and kind of staying around, trying to play football as high a level as I could, putting as much into it, uh, coaching as much as I could, absolutely just so mad about it. And I couldn't, I couldn't figure out me when I was younger, why lads were going away. I kind of thought yeah. this is a bit mad. Like, why, why are these lads? Like, we had, in 2010, we had something like eight lads move to Australia in the one year. And I thought this was mental. I was mm. like, this is, this is crazy stuff. Why would lads leave, you know, and leave Shannon Gales or leave? You know, a Calvin Hanlon or leave a leech from Hanlon, you'd be thinking, uh, that's mad. But it's until you get a little bit over and you realise, mm-hmm. look, at people's lives move on, there's different scenarios going on uh, in everyone's lives. And, you know, you, you just kind of have to go with it. Like, But there is there is definitely, it's inter-county football, I think, and it's mad since even maybe I started. I went in in 15 for Leitrim. And, uh, you know, where it's gone to from then to now is... It's a different ball game, you know. It's, yeah. it's it's mental. Like from a Division Four team to a Division One team, there's there's no difference, to be honest, in the hours and the minutes you're putting in uh, to your workload, uh, to like you know trying to be the best you can and, and putting in every minute of the day, prepping and getting planning yourself to get a performance out of yourself during the week at the weekends. Uh, so like you know, it, it is it is very demanding, but it's it's a place that you really have to ask questions to yourself when you're going to an intercounty panel now is. Do I want to be here? Am I willing to put this in? Because you know, there's, it's literally, it is, it is a, it is a place where look at lads, lads will be asked hard questions, and you know, you have to be there for the right reasons and stuff too, because you, you probably won't stick it. You know, it is, it's gone to that level. Like you know, you have to really, really want it and enjoy it. You know, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, look at lads are taking step away, especially after COVID. You know, you're not going to blame them either. Like I know for a fact there. Look at there's. There's going to be more lads in Cavan going away. Look, at, yeah. I don't know anything, but there's going to be lads in Leeds from there going away. It's you know, and, and unfortunately, lads have been locked up the last few years, and they're just kind of you know they've, they've put in big efforts there with their clubs and counties now, and you know they, they might want to go and take six to twelve months or something, and you know go and see a bit, get out of that bubble, 
Uh, and you know what? Uh, I I wouldn't hold it against them either. You know, I went and mm-hmm. done my bit, I suppose. But uh, you know, just everyone's different. Everyone's different. Different things going on in the right for the minute too. You know, but uh, inter county football has definitely gone gone to a different level. <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, no, it definitely seems that because like I, <clears throat> you can't even think like there's not many like you could nearly say thirty three to thirty four year olds, even thirty two year olds really playing inter county football. It really does seem like a game for kind of young lads at this stage and like maybe the teachers or whatever you're having yourself these days. So the likes of even thirty plus and uh, Evan, that like, them days seem to be shortening as well. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny there. Uh, look, I, I, it's hard to speak for other saddles, but just with our saddles with Leeds from there, we we had. Um, We'd one guy in the panel there with a kid there, you know, and other than that there, we most of the panel was literally 30, 31, you know, we one one lad in there, 33, 34, maybe I'm calling him a bit older than what he is, <laughs> uh, Muggsy, you might like that. Uh, but oh, I'm looking, yeah. Other, other than that, we've been, uh, you know, we've been lucky, like I suppose, and that's the big thing, you know, lads are working in, you know, there is lads working in high profile jobs and, you know, they're, they're making it work because they want to be there, you know, as well. Like, you know, it's not as if they're, it's, it's, it's funny you hear the dubs too, like, and they have lads working in just as high a profile jobs as anywhere. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they, they're putting in massive effort. Like, you know, the only thing is like with Leach from there, we have a lot of young lads with students, like it is, it is starting to go that way. It makes life a bit easier that they can train more. I suppose they probably have a bit more downtime to recover. Um, you know, lad, lads in certain jobs definitely can help, but uh, it's it's hard, I suppose, look at because Leitrim would have been based off the Anaduft Centre of Excellence there, and we would have worked out of everything out there. We have lads coming from Limerick, Galway, Dublin, uh, a little bit all over as well. Like so, it's you know, it's kind of it's it's the commuting, it's the driving, it's kind of putting it in. It depends what you have going on, like you know. I suppose any man there, I suppose, getting married or. Uh, um having kids now as well you know it is it's putting a huge strain um and an extra bear and you know it's just the hours that's going in it's the hours when you get there it's the hours of your travel uh everything like that i suppose it's it's only when you're around it you realize kind of how much is going into it you know mm. um but no that's been kind of it like but that's kind of where everyone is it's the same for everyone you know it's kind of it's the same for every county setup you know the hours that you're with it depends on your your outside life, kind of what you're doing work-wise as well. Like it was funny for myself. Yeah, I was back in, had been away for two years there. The training level was so high. Um, you know, with unbelievable setup and all, everything was. But it was for myself. I used to be thinking every day. I used to be you go home from training and you'd be thinking, where can I get an extra hour here to go and get a recovery session in or get something else just to prep, get yourself ready for uh, the next training or or the next or that weekend. You know, because you knew there was something coming up for games or or loads or gym sessions. You know. Uh, you know, it's it is a huge bubble that you're literally stuck in. That you're literally like, you know, how can I get ahead or what can I do? Yeah. Um, you know. Mm. But yeah. No. Yeah. Other than that, all so that's kind of what's happening. But yeah, it's the same for everyone. You know, you you do it because you want to be there as well. That's the main yeah. thing. You know. I- yeah, and I suppose as well as that, Nevin, like it is vital that the you know the GA do can look after the players, the product, because I know we talked about expenses this year and everything goes with that, Nevin. But look, if you've lads traveling from X, Y, and Z, I really, and I've said this in the podcast numerous times, you need to look after the players because the end of the day, Nevin, they're the product. Yeah, well, that's it. I suppose look at lads are lads are putting in a big effort. Um, you know, um, especially on that, I suppose look at it when you are when you are, I suppose, a, a county based in a certain location. There's more of a strain put on you, depending on uh, your location. You know, like it, it management teams there, it's very hard to try and facilitate everyone. There is going to be certain boys always kind of having to put that that extra uh, run in, you know, and extra drives and stuff. And it is tough, uh, but you know, it is it's it is like there's there's a lot of good stuff being done for players as well. You know, you can't just that like county boards are they're trying their best there. In Leach and fairness, like the, we've been well looked after. You know, the management team has kind of got what they wanted. We've We've been well looked after there this year, you know. So there's a lot of good things going on there, I suppose, as well. But it's I was what can uh, Crow Park or these places higher up, I suppose, do to help them facilitate uh, players, you know. Yeah. But in fairness, there is a lot of good stuff being done. Can there be more? Probably, definitely. I suppose every player in the country will tell you they're definitely, you know, will take all the help we can get. Like, but just trying to trying to facilitate lads to make life as easy as possible for them when they're performing at that level, you know. Mm. 
Mm, absolutely, I mean, yeah. absolutely. I suppose. And touching on to uh, league trip season, you did just have, and obviously, um, Andy Morden's um, gone in this year, and I suppose, God, like what a name to have about the place. And obviously, you know, two more years. Uh, it was it agreed a couple of weeks ago? So Leitrim's uh, year as a whole, and he's got to play your former county in Carrick and Shannon back in January. Yeah, no. Look at Andy's. Andy's came in. Uh, he's he's been top class so far. Like you know himself, he, Mike Solon came with him from Mayo as well, and. Uh, you know, they've brought a huge, huge level of uh, a high performance unit. Like that's what the players kind of have been craving. Um, you know, I was, I was, I was lucky enough to kind of get asked back in to come in, go at it again, see how it went. But uh, you know, it was really, really good, really enjoyable year. Um, great group of lads. I was saying I was coming back in. There's a lot of young lads coming through there that I hadn't played with. A few lads I had been with had all retired. But uh, you know, there, there was a good bunch there. You know, lads, lads came in and they put in a big, big shift for them. Um, you know, and you know, there, there was a lot of progression made this year. You know, very disappointed, obviously, uh, not to get promotion there. Felt that that was a big kind of goal. A um, couple of hard games there. You know, Cavan, especially early on, Cavan coming to Carrick and Shannon was a huge, huge game. Yeah. You know, Cavan performed most of the champions. Everyone was just thinking this one. You no, know, and it was a very good game. Um, you know, the Leeds have a, had a lot of good work done. A lot of young lads being thrown into a big, big match like that. And, you know, coming out with good performances. Uh, and that was the big thing there, I suppose. Andy and Mike coming in from AO. Like, we had Barry McQueenie and uh, James Clancy from Leeds from there as well. But the lads coming in, you know, it, it, it probably took a good while to get to know the players. They only had the one game in the FPD, a couple of challenge matches. And, you know, it's trying to get a good look at lads early on, you know, heading into them league games. And especially early on when we had Cavan and Tipperary first, you know, it, it, it takes, uh, I suppose, to see when you're throwing lads into them bigger games against bigger teams, like who can perform at this level, you know, or can we do a lot of stuff right, you know, and I felt we did, we, we made huge progression as the thing went on, you know, we started to improve and improve, like we were lucky in Carrick that day, it was a really wet, miserable day, and like, it's funny, we talked about um, Raymond and goals, like, you know, and just like a, an absolute, like, hailstorm in Carrick, you know, heavy, heavy pitch, and to be able to have him in your locker there to come up the field and kick, I think it was four or five, 45 yeah. freeze from that distance, you know, on a wet, wet day, like, yeah. you know, it was just like he had the, he had the driver out there on the golf course and he was just mm. driving the ball over the bar, you know, and, you know, that's, that's the thing there, you know, you want to be playing against that quality of opposition that are, have played against, you know, higher level there, like most of them Cavaliers, a lot of them would have, would have been around Division 1 uh, setups that played that level, you know, and, like, a bit of experience there, and that's what the younger groups, lads in Leitrim there, wanted, you know, there's a lot of experience boys there with Leitrim too, you know, and, quality quality footballers but uh it's, it was great for them younger lads to come through and, and compete there and do really well you know like Cavan look at have been very strong they're they were in year is it year four now under mickey yeah, uh, tw- yeah. since 2019 yeah yeah you know like and you're 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 looking at leads from there which was you know it's very starty year one under andy and his management team you know and a lot of good work starting off we're get, getting things going uh getting a panel together you know getting a, a game plan a structure in place but it, it does take time, you know, and mm. you have a Cavan who are coming from after winning us the title, competing with Dublin and Ireland semi-final in, in the year four, you know, coming to town. You know, at that level, it does make a huge, huge difference. Um, although we look at, we went down to Tipperary uh, the following week then, and we, we put in a massive performance, got everything to go well on the day. You know, we, 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 we did exactly what we said we were going to do. We went down, got a performance and got a win there. You know, mm. and that was a good message to send out. Um, a couple other good results there. Even look at the Division Four there. I think the Cavanaghs will tell you as well. I'm sure that it's a dog a dog a division. Like you know, I've played in an now Island. You know, on their day, everyone's hard to beat there. Like you know, absolutely. Even Cavan went over to London there to see how dog a teams can catch you if you have any way of an off day. Um, you know, but we obviously look. We got caught too. We went. We had London then in the National League, and they caught us. And the game was moved to the Connick Centre of Excellence. In the middle of a hailstorm as well. I think it was half snowing nearly during the game. But uh, you know, and like that's just a learning curve too. A lot of young lads out that day, uh, and you know, experience that dogged football as well, being able to grind out them results, you know, that's stuff that our lads were learning and, and, and you know, doing doing well at, you know, a lot of a lot of lads there got a lot of game time, uh, you know, and it's only gonna to stand to us better, you know. It was a it was disappointing now, we're not saying that we were still very disappointed now not to push on and try and get promotion, but you know, there was a yeah. lot of good learnings and outcomes from the National League for too, you know. Uh, but look at Andy, Andy and Mike and Baz. And we had James Clancy there, but he's after he's after moving off to Longford on us there now. He's actually gone in on uh, uh, 
uh, Paddy Christie's ticket. Coaching there, ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. Uh, but uh, look, the boys have been top class there. You know, even S and C wise there, Dahi McCabe coming in from mm. Dublin, and he's been he's been brilliant there. You know, you talk about the quality of someone like that there, and anyone will tell you someone that's kind of running a high performance unit there, like like your Andre Quinn there in Cavan. Mm. You know, top top class people behind the scenes that do so much good work keep lads on the field like you know a die is his hands full trying to keep a lad like me there three crew <laughs> on the field you know every week there's, there's something going but you know lads like that they're doing massive massive work behind the scenes people wouldn't have a clue about you know they keep they really really keep things moving uh you know but uh no it's it's been good there's a lot of progression made look at we 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 had a couple of runs there we got we got over london there in the conic championship uh, which we were hoping to expect to move on and we, we wanted to compete. Obviously got Galway then, ended up in an Ireland final. And, you know, look, at we, it, it was a kick in the teeth now to go and get a hammering. Um, you know, we did, we got, a, we got a bit of a lesson, but, you know, we, we took a lot of learnings from the first half of that game where we we tried stuff. We, you know, we, we caused Galway problems. We did a lot of stuff that we'd worked on ourselves. And, you know, mm. it was a big, big learning curve. I think we left that day in Galway. Now, look, we were had form you you kind of go away and you lick your wounds a wee bit but yeah you know we learned a lot from it i think a lot of that group there younger lads you know had had went and tested themselves against huge quality uh mm-hmm. you know and some of us did well you know and, and they asked questions of a few goal lads you know and there, there was definitely you know it's not the way you want to lose a game but we kind of went for the wee bit too we didn't sit back with every man behind the ball we thought we'll, we'll push up and go a wee bit but uh you know it was a good learning curve too. We came away from that. We licked our wounds. We got on with it. We trained hard, and we went at the Talton Cup, same as Calvin there. You know, as hard as we could, and you know, it was a, it was a really good campaign by the end of it. You know, we got got minutes in the lads, and you know, we we got a couple of wins there as well. Like you know, that's that's what Leach wanted. Like they're just craving out for wins in Carrick. Mm-hmm. You know, anytime you get a, a big national league win there or championship win in Carrick and Shannon there, I've been lucky to be there for a few even qualifier wins and. You know, it's it's a really really good buzz. You know, like they're stone mad about football up in Leitrim here. It's 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 brilliant. Mm. Like you know, they do. They're they're stone mad about it as well. Like no matter no matter the same as any county, but uh, it does. It means a lot there now when you when you get a results like that there. More more and more kind of quality games like that in the championship. Like you know, when you're Antrim coming to Carrick there, and, and then a local derby with Sligo. Mm. Uh, it, you know, that's that's the football boys want. You know, they want games like that, competitive matches. You know, in front of bigger crowds. You know, and that's the way lads are going to perform and want to learn and, and stay playing for the county, you know, as well, because that's the that's the reward, you know, for all the hard work, the trainings, four or five nights mm-hmm. a week, the boys are out, their, you know, recovery sessions are doing their own. You know, you want to be performing and playing in more of them big matches, you know. Yeah, definitely get up to that level. I suppose, obviously, you, did, you referred to the game against Galway in the Connacht Championship and obviously, like... <clears throat> You know, Galway got over, uh, won the game in the end. But like the, we say, the Mayo game last year, Nevin, obviously, um, it was on you know TV, and I suppose maybe that that probably was the need for change and bits and pieces. Like you know, the mindset kind of after that game, like would you be kind of thinking, right, can we learn from this? You know, let's not get too too, too disheartened. Or like, what's kind of the mindset after them type of games? Yeah, it's it's um, look, I I wasn't around for the the year before, so there's no point in me commenting on that. I, I didn't know how lads kind of had reacted to that. Um, or how it'd been, but like for ourselves there against Galway last year, look at it was it's a real, real kick between the legs to be honest. Now you look at you do you leave? You're you're asking hard questions of yourself, like you know as players or management team I'm sure were too, like ask questions of what we've done. It, but like look at same as any team, no matter who you are, you you have to sit down and you have to kind of go and you know we sit down, you look at the game as a group, you ask hard questions of each other, you ask boys why was this done or, or lads are asking questions why you done this, why would you do that, um, and you have to learn, you know, you learn, you learn, you learn, you, and you get as much out as you can, and you know and that's what we did, the same as every other county you do, you sit down, you you watch a game, you you, you analyze it as best we can, we get as much information out of it, and and you you go again, you know, and first man says it's once the game is played. It's over, you know, that's that's kind of it. But we wanted to kind of, you know, learn as much as we could from it, uh, you know, because you didn't want to be having a, you didn't want to be kind of, after having a good league campaign, we, you know, we've done a lot of good stuff there. There was a bit of a buzz around the county, you know, and that, that kind of did flatten us a wee bit after the goal again. But, you know, we, we sat down, we asked hard questions to ourselves, um, you know, as the group went on there, like, lads, we got a few boys back, a couple of lads injuries, you know, and, and, got on with it, trained really hard and just prepped as well as we could then, you know, we got Antrim in the draw, 
and you know it it kind of helps you know it, it pulls us together maybe a wee bit in certain ways as well you know so look at the same as the same as every other team in the country when you get a defeat or you get a loss and you know you, yeah, you just have to sit down you have to analyze it you just ask hard questions and and, and take as much out of it as you can you know I suppose we kind of did kind of talk about Jay at the start. I suppose a point on it is, I suppose, when, when you get a beat with that, like the, I know the Tall Cup definitely is trying to bridge that gap now. Do you feel like the Tall Cup has been a success and, you know, Leitrim and the likes of Carroll and all these teams, you know, really, really will try to benefit from it? Yeah, definitely. You know, um, there's it's it's been a very good combination now. Look, at there's there's definitely improvements can be made. Uh, you know, the North South thing we were we were looking at as well, we thought it was. It was hard, like, you know, looking in, yeah. obviously, the northern section opinion I thought now was a lot stronger. Uh, we were in that northern section, and, you know, so, look, you, you have to play, you have to play the money, but uh, it's, it's a huge, it's a, it's, it's a huge gig because them extra weeks, I suppose, looking at it as a player, you know, you want to be playing in bigger matches. You know you're going to get crowds at them games. Everyone knows in the counties that they're going to be competitive. And that's the only way you're going to improve. And, you know, going and winning them matches is, is massive for any county in Division 3 or Division 4. And, you know, and everyone's fit to go and beat each other on the day. Like, you know, and that, that's the opinion of everyone. You know, we're, we're good enough to go and beat them. Or, you know, it's, it's, it's a learning curve. It's, it's a great way. Like, we threw in there a couple of lads that hadn't got any game time in League Cup as well, the young lads there. And, you know, they, they're done really, really well. And all of a sudden, they're, they're, well, they're, they're more well-known. They're getting more... Uh, attention they're kind of you know building more of a profile themselves and that's what players want because there's so mm. much going into it as well uh so much hard work the lads are building like you know they want to get their award of playing more matches and i'd say if you asked any player or even management team you know they want matches you want games 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 yeah. and comp- and competitive games you know and let's be yeah. honest there look at where we we know ourselves there the last the last couple of years like you know in connect it's it's very hard place when you have the likes of a goal with my own or uh you know to go and you know, you're you're trying to compete and you're trying to play as well as you can. But like, you know, we you, just, you can't learn anything from them games, really, Nevin. Grand scheme of things. No, no, but you can look at you. You still have to go and you have to try and perform, and, and you have to go out and try and get a result. You know, and that's yeah. that's the end of the day. No matter what, who you're playing, you're still going out. You're setting up your stall the best you can. You you want to go obviously and, and and perform as best you can, and if that lead to a result, uh, great. You know, so look at. Lads, lads know that as well. Uh, like any Division three or four team knows that there's a lot of work. When you're going out to play a Division one or two team, you know you have to get a lot of things right. Yeah. You have to make sure you're performing really well. And you know, unfortunately now there's been a lot of kickings, not just in Leitrim, but there's been a lot of kickings there even in oh, the games and stuff yeah. as well. Yeah. So yeah. like, look at it. Uh, I think I think Talton Cup. I think if they if they inject more games into it, the teams are maybe getting more matches. I think it's going to be a massive boost for any county in Division three and four because. All you, all lads wants is games, you know, especially come that time of year. The hard work is all done. You know, mm-hmm. the dogged winter training there has been finished up. You've been playing matches in the National League. You know, some of them are, are in the middle of wet storms as well in the National yeah. League. It's not all just yeah. nice football too. It's it's a bit of hard work, you know, a bit of grit games. But, you know, come the sun is shining there, like, you know, you want to be turning up to these county grounds. You want to be playing in front of big crowds. And, you know, lads want to perform. Like, you know, that's that's the kind of end goal at the end of the day too. Like, all, all your work is, is leading into that. And, Management teams which want to go out and try and get their players to perform and, and show in counties then you know the hard work that's going in and a lot of work's going on behind the scenes you know and give give people just a leechman for example there like you know anything just give give them something to feed off you know something to get a get a result results there you know when you're away off games then people traveling matches you know it gives everyone a lift there as well within the county when you're winning games no matter what you know. Mm, absolutely, I mean, absolutely. I suppose well, we did kind of touch on Andy Moore at the start, but like in fairness, what a man to have about the place. You know, he played the year back in 2017. Um, just a terrific man. Like obviously, he done a lot of media work last year, but he, he's cut his teeth now with Leitrim lads and now for the next two years. So, what a man to have about the place. Yeah, no, look at uh, Andy. Andy's very good. Like, look at he, he's the first man to say it himself. He's he was new. He, he's new to county level management. Um, you know, he, he's he's played at such a high level, he can't be any higher, he's performed so well, so he knows what it's about, he knows the pedigree that's needed and the hard work that has to go in, um, and he's seen how a high performance unit is run in Mayo, obviously, and, you know, th- how things are done right, and, you know, boys are eating up that information off him as well, obviously, he's trying to put structures in place, um, you know, and, and that's all we can do, like, you know, we're, he's, he's a young manager, he's come in really enthusiastic about it all, he's 
he's anyone that knows Andy will will, will know how positive a fella he is. Yeah. You know, he, he's 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 constantly coming in. He's upbeat. He he's striving. He, he's he's a good relationship there. I think with the players as well and management team. Everyone seems to get on well. We're we're kind of working together. Like and you have uh no, but like. Andy, Andy's one man in there too, like as well, like and he, he'd say it himself there, like you know he's brought in a really good backroom team with him as well. You know the lads that were all there last year put in a massive contribution too there. Even you know you Baz Baz McQueenie there was a serious Leeds from footballer and he's come in, he's he's been a great addition there. James Clancy as well, who was a stalwart forward with Leeds from he was quality like and he's come in and he's put his own. He's a really good coach heading him too. Like obviously he's moved on now, but like stuff like that, you know behind the scenes, uh, you know been massive. And Mike Solon then who would have been part of. Mayo, like he had actually he'd won in All Ireland there with Mayo in their twenties. Another genius, you know, around the place. You know, just high quality guys that are thinking about football at a really high level. You know, that have seen the game. You know, in different scenarios and different. And you know, they've just come in with a good bit of experience behind them too. And you know, anything that anyone can bring that's been at high performance units and and seen the game at high level. You know, they're they're only going to add stuff to it. You know, and that's what we want. You know, especially just just building Leeds with such a young group of lads there coming. Real hungry, mad to do well, uh, and that's what you want. You want them coming into a really good setup that is that's that's doing well. Like lads are doing stuff right, and that building towards something, you know. Mm, that's but uh, yeah, no, Andy, Andy's been Andy's been very good. Like in fairness now to him, like but he's he'd be the first person to tell you as well. Like he, he's he's a really good backroom team around him. He's he's getting the best out of them as well. Um, he'll be adding in probably more to the management team this year now with James stepping away, but. Um, you know, it, it it's good, you know, and he's a very, very kind of he's a he's kind of a big personality around the place too, but he's he's really good, really really positive around the place. And you know, he's full on coach. He he's stuck in, he's kinda leading the charge on the on the pitch with the whistle and you know, he's he's trying to get the best out of lads. But yeah, no, it's been been really good and positive so far. So I think everyone in Leitrim is happy to hold on to him for another year or two, anyway. Hundred percent, my man, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and obviously, have you been? Did you keep a good eye on maybe Cavan's uh, successes? And you know, did, yeah. did you see Watson this year? Yeah, yeah, no, look at it. Uh, would be up and down. He's there, a good bit chatting to him. Uh, but yeah, no, I ended up. I got a few games in as well. Um, you know, I was actually up at the Talbot Cup final, and you know, the, probably disappointed leaving Cavan to draw. You know, and, and the lads would have been as well. Like you know, the you know, performance has been really good though. As I say, like it's it's funny you're going out in them games. I know Calvin would have been nearly favourites in every match they played all year, and it literally was. I suppose they they were they and they were they equipped themselves pretty well because every game was nearly like a you know an All Ireland final. Every team they yeah. played them because they were, they were trying to beat them. Like you know, and it doesn't matter if Calvin had you know been playing Division One football. You still have to equip yourself. You still have to go and perform. And in fairness, they did. Like, look, they didn't get over the hurdle there in the Cup final. But I was very impressed with Smead. Also, I thought you know they brought a lot of pace and power to the game. And, yeah, you know, they're, yeah. They're a lot of quality. They have a lot, a lot of quality too. Like you know, maybe Cavan left that day. You know, maybe a little bit annoyed that they didn't perform in certain aspects of the game uh, that they had done in the previous rounds. Mm. Um, but. You know, I suppose. Look at the they they probably it was a positive year for Calvin. I'd say look, and in from the outside, Annie, I'd say look at they they won Division Four. They got to a Talent Cup final. They probably wanted to win it. You know, well from chatting the boys, they definitely wanted to win it more than every team in it. You know, um, but no, it's kind of hard. I suppose when look at when you're away, when you're when when you're playing with another county, it's or when I'm with Leeds from there, like you, it's it's very hard to see what's going on anywhere else. Annie, to be honest, you're kind of. You're so you're kind of involved there. You're in that bubble. So yeah, obviously, I was keeping an eye on Calvin because we're in Division Four. But you know, it's it's week on week there with National League with us, and you're mm-hmm. literally like as soon as the game is over, whether you've been away or you're traveling back up the road in the bus, like as soon as that game is over, you're literally focusing on training Tuesday night mm-hmm. or gym session on Monday or how can I get ready for training Tuesday night or we have whoever, for example, Carlo or Wexford next week or someone, you know, uh, and that's kind of how it goes. But no, you just be keeping an eye on results then, see how things are going. But um, no, it was uh, it was interesting though. Like, look at Calvin, Calvin, Calvin have a lot of quality there. A lot of good young lads there. Look, at I I was lucky enough coaching there a lot with the minors and under twenty, so I know some of them lads coming through. And you know, there are a lot of great young lads there coming as well. You know, really good work ethic in them. You know, mad to learn, mad to improve. So you know, they they they'll be happy enough. You know, a lot of them lads got a lot of football in as, as well this year. And you know, even playing Division Four football. 
they they learn plenty in that sort of way because it's a hard hard place to play football like you know and there's there's a lot there's, there's a lot of quality in division four but like it's tough tough dogged games too you know you're not going to get anything easy you know especially the young lad coming through you know Oh, hundred percent. I suppose yeah. obviously we we we've seen in recent weeks that obviously uh, Mickey Mickey Graham has you know, uh, signed a contract for another two years. Marty Curry's uh, left in recent weeks as well, and uh, there's no just word on Mickey Graham's backroom team for the year here. I'm presuming it's going to be pretty much the same. But uh, Mickey for another two years. Yeah, I I don't know. Um, I actually know. No, I haven't I haven't talked to Mickey, but he's he seems to be he, he's look at he's he's a passionate calf man about football. Um, I know he's still mad about it, like you know so. Look at uh, Mickey be the first one to say if he's happy enough, he thinks he's doing the right thing with Calvin and things are going well, you know, he he'll be mad to stay and improve things and keep it going, you know. And there's 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 a good bunch there, lads there, like a lot of you lads even my age group, um, uh, still around the county, mad to do well. Um, you know, and there's there's a lot of good young lads coming, you know, there is, um, even in our own club here, like, you know, we've likes Queeving there coming back, you know, there's a good age profile there, lads, that age group, you know, twenty, twenty one now coming and you know they're mad hungry to push on too and get their chance and push on into panels. Like, and that's 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 what you need. You know, look at you need that in every every county is the same. We're all striving, looking for that that young miner, that under twenty that's that's hungry to push on. But if you can if you can keep that conveyor belt coming, as they say, it's it's going to make it a a lot better. You know. Hmm. I have to touch on uh, Jason McLaughlin as well. I think he's. <clears throat> Probably the most underrated Calvin player to do the last couple of years. He's been on the bounce since, I think, 2012 at this year uh, stage. And Evan, a club mate of yours, and he just goes about his business so quietly. Yeah, no, he is. It's yeah, no, 12 was his debut against Donegal. It's funny, like I played at Jail since the first day I landed in Shannon Gales underage. I remember, and uh, I remember his debut was my sister's christening, or not christening. Oh, Jesus, I'm way off. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm way off. My sister's communion, and he, his sister, uh, was having her communion as well, or confirmation. I can't remember. One of them. One of them. One of them, man. Yeah. But, uh, geez, I remember the word came through, and Val, Jason's father, turned around in the middle of the mat chapel, and he turned around to me and he goes, "He's fucking starting." And uh, I just <laughs> in, the middle of, in the middle of the mass, I just turned around and I turned around to my old pair, and I just, "I'm way here." Jay was starting his Donny Gall, and I just oh. stood up in the middle of mass, and I had the suit trousers on me and all the jacket, and I. Just got up and left, so I did in the middle of it all. And go, home to go. the house. When I heard he was starting, I said, No way, I missed this. So yeah. headed for Breffney Park. I think I was in the full suit, to be honest, when I walked in. <laughs> I swear to God, I was in behind the goal. I just drove as hard as I could, headed for Breffney into the game. Like, you know, because yeah. uh, look, at played with Jay the whole way up. He's he's absolute quality. You know, he's very quiet about it. He goes and does his business. But yeah. even with the club, even with the club here, you know, he. He does everything right. Uh, you know, he, he he's brilliant with around the young lads in the seat. When you see him, someone doing something, you know, uh, and you see the quality he is, and look at he he can mix it with the best in Ulster or in the country on his day, you know, and that's Big time, you know. And when you see that coming, you know, and young lads even down here in our direction, like Shannon Gale or in West Calvin, like they see a lad performing of that level, and you know, and that quality going out marking your. Conor McManus is there, or you're, you know, I've seen him even a couple of days there. He dispossessed, I think, Murphy there with a turnover in that Ulster final. And, mm. you know, boys around here are still talking about it. Mm. Uh, you know, and the quality he's he's shown his game there. I think in the last, last, well, like we all have had it, but I suppose the last 12 months I thought has been brilliant for him. He, he's really showed his athleticism. Oh, yeah, big how, time. How much, he can, how much he can move around the field and get forward and he can kick scores. And he has so much more to his game that other people probably didn't know as much because I suppose when he was underage, he, he we played with a lot of defensive systems as often Calvin and you know they obviously they work with but um he was always tied up as that go to man marker like you know <laughs> I was laughing like I don't know how he enjoyed half them Ulster titles under age one because he had the hardest day out the hardest thing to do yeah you know he was always picking up uh, the go to man but like obviously just 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 got on with it you know and done done his business really well like in fairness look at um he he's been quality like so look at Hopefully, Jay out there, there's there's loads of football left in him the next couple of years, Annie. You know, he, the way he looks after himself, the way he kind of goes about, uh, how he treats his football and stuff. You know, he's 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 a lot more to come as well out of him. So look, we're we're just delighted to have him. Shannon Gales, you know, please God keep him. Keep him in <laughs> <free>. <laughs> no. We- yeah, no, he's a top man. He's a top man. I suppose, Evan, obviously, uh, yourself, obviously, you did win a couple of minor titles and under-21 titles with Cav, and then, obviously, you started for Leitrim in 2015. Was it just you're living closer to the Leitrim setup? Is that the main reason for? Um, yeah, I suppose, well, look, at I, I would have a massive uh, connection with Leitrim. I would have lived in Leitrim until I was nearly 12 years of age. I moved yeah. to Black Lion 
So I would have played my football underage even until I was about nearly 13, 14 with Trum Kieran in Leitrim. And uh, we moved to Black Lion, but I still would have represented Leitrim underage development squads. Um, and then I think come minor, it was actually Mickey was over the minors at the time, uh, ended up getting asked into the Cav minor panel in 2010 with Jason. Jason was Jason was a year older than me, like, but went in oh, yeah. and played that year. But we, you know, really enjoyed it. Great crew of lads. Like, you know, you're, yeah, obviously, at minor, minor football is very funny. You, you kind of make friends with the lads there and you never really lose them. You know, it was a great bunch of lads, even that 2010 team. Uh, you know, you'd still be in touch with now. And then you uh, ended up playing two years there. We look at 2011, obviously, with a massive year. We ended up winning us the title. And, you know, very unlucky not to push on for close to another Ireland that year. You know, go all the way to yeah. the Longford. Yeah. And, um, you know, we were, we, were, we were a really good quality side. I think that 11 team, when you look at it, the amount of players that have kicked on and played actually Big senior time. county football, uh, yeah. was massive. Uh, you know, really, really good group of lads there. Dermot was over that team, Dermot Gibb. And, uh, you know, a lot of that team pushed on, you know, and, and, and success, some to say breed success. And look at, obviously, that team pushed through, but was coming through into an under-21 team that had reached an All-Ireland final, I think, the year before. So there was a... A gang of us brought in, I think it was four or five of us brought in from that minor team, winning minor team into the under 21 set of the time. Yeah, and look at it, it was brilliant. Like, look at, we were, I was only 18 and you were training the way. There was a lot of lads there at that time. I remember like Barry Riley was only home from the AFL he had been with. And these lads you were mad to play with, you know, lads you'd seen there playing in an Ireland final the year before. And, yeah. You know, it was brilliant. And like, you know, a really good group of lads, you know, yeah. uh, it, was, it was quality. Like, you know, we had the likes of, look, and Terry was over that team, but he had the likes of Joe McCarthy with him. Uh, it was unbelievable when I look back like you know the coaches that, that we had were very lucky like Joe I think was 10 years ahead of everyone back then yeah. you know God be good to him as well Levin shock and uh, loss he was, yeah he was you know but like when you, when you think back like he was just his brain his football brain was just insane like you know how far ahead of everyone he was thinking just back then even uh, you know he was on a different level he was brilliant uh, Peter Donnelly trained us like you know yeah. he couldn't have had a better like literally, you know, the reason that you nearly kind of go into, you, when you think of going coaching now, you know, you literally learn so much of them boys, you wouldn't even think about it, you know, uh, they, were, they were top, top class. Um, you know, we put lucky enough then and stayed with them teams, but uh, middle year, I think 2013, done me cruciate. Um, it wasn't 13, was it? Yeah, it was 13, done me cruciate. So that was my second cruciate in. So I'd done it between my first and second year minor. But I had also done then, that was my second cruise in under 21. But I got back from my final year. Uh, Peter Riley was over us then. Uh, we were unlucky too. Dublin pipped us in All Ireland semi final oh, for Leash. Yeah. It was a really, really good, really, really good game. You know, we'd been playing mm. Dublin a lot. That was like a Dublin team of Paul Mannion, John Small, Fenton, all them boys, and Caffrey. But we played them boys, I suppose, a lot of minor and under 21 challenges, even and stuff. And, you know, we were no fear of them. You know, we, we were really, really unlucky that day when you look back on it. Um, you know, with a couple of great lads there, like, um, you know, I think a couple of injuries that day. I think, I think Brian Sankey was 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 out injured with his hand that day actually as well. And we were we were unlucky, you know. Uh, a few things could have went away. A couple of referee decisions, obviously at the end and stuff. Yeah. But um, you know, when you obviously like look at looking back now, it was unbelievable years. We literally went, I don't know, four four years there without losing a game in Ulster underage. Yeah. It was, it was quality there, like you know, and a really really good group of lads and boys were there for the right reasons mad to train you know but that yeah. was that was a big in fairness like uh county board the right men in place then you know we the management teams were top class they knew how to facilitate it they made it really enjoyable back then too as well you know and you know we were we were training at a really high level and you know winning games was brilliant you know you were you were getting your chances you were, um i remember they were laughing back then they were saying the dubs were ringing calvin then looking for challenges and kerry was too you know it wasn't yeah. you know it wasn't it wasn't um it wasn't the case where you were looking for challenge games. Literally, the whole country was ringing you, you know? Yeah. So that's where the kind of standards were at that stage, you know, and where boys had set them. So it was, it was really good. It was a really enjoyable time. Uh, great crew of lads there who would have been along with that playing, you know? So a lot of mates made that way. It was good. Big time. Um, but no, I stepped in then. I think it was a played a year there with the juniors then with Calvin, but, yeah. you know, a year or two there, really, you know, good crack there with them. We ended up, we won in All-Ireland, actually. Against Kerry, yeah. I was on Kerry, yeah, down there. And I played in the Leinster, but it didn't, it didn't feature in the Ireland final look, but uh, it was very, very good. It was great crack. Jesus Christ, there's some characters in that team too, like uh, a couple of mad nights out. Jesus <laughs> Christ, it was serious. Uh, but that was the one thing too, even after them under 20. Under 20 great banter. 
Ah, oh, it was unbelievable. Like, we used to go away for like, you know, even if we were back there in Ireland or the Ulster final, we'd won, obviously, but they were all Wednesday night games. Yeah. So you nearly didn't get to celebrate them as much. Like, obviously, I know, we, did. Yeah. we still we still went fairly hard now. We'd land in the town town there and we'd, <laughs> we'd go out for the Wednesday night for the crack, can't you? But we, uh, we used to land back there after like a couple of Ireland semi finals. Like, uh, you'd be gone for the week. You would. You yeah. wouldn't know where you'd end up with the crew books. Yeah. Brian, Brian yeah. Sankey leading the charge. You wouldn't know where you'd end up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time. But, uh, yeah, yeah. No, it, it was a brilliant time. In fairness, like um, you know, but just a couple of injuries there. I was out. Look, it didn't didn't play much football then for a year or two. It was weaving with clubs. Kind of hadn't, you know, just injuries. I was picking up more injuries. I was I was nearly a year, two years trying to play with Shannon Gales. Mm. Couldn't get my body right. Uh, then the third year, I think I went to London for a summer. Then and played over there, ended up winning the championship in London, a great crack over there, that was mm. a, that was an unbelievable time, and uh, came home then, and actually, I think that was been 15, 16, yeah, that was that year, uh, Shane Ward, who had been my maths teacher in Manor Hamilton, so I went to school in Manor Hamilton, uh, in Leitrim, and he, he ended up getting the Leitrim senior job, but well, he was in mm. his second year term with them, yeah. uh, and he, he, he met me a couple of times, and Ended up kind of saying, look at it coming in and told me the plan, what it was. And, and you know, I knew a lot of the leads from that, Danny, to be honest, because I played a lot of them with the yeah. development squads and stuff. Yeah. So, look at, I was delighted, came, came in then, look at, uh, you know, came, came in at that stage then. And, you know, I was delighted. It was, it was really good. You know, Shane Ward was a brilliant manager then. You know, he had a good group of lads. I came in, it was a bit of an older leads from team. Uh, it's easy for me to say that now, like looking in, but... Uh, there were there was a lot of older team lads about there. There was a couple of young lads coming through then as well. But uh, it was still, you know, we we didn't performance wise, we didn't go as well as we wanted. But it was enjoyable. Like you know, it was my first proper taste in county football as well. Like you know, I got bits of chances with Calvin, but I hadn't been in there. And did you, know, you ever was, play for the Calvin seniors then? No, did. hadn't been in. Oh no, yeah, I was with the juniors for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, but no, I hadn't been in. Like you know, and it was a it was a real good taste. Like look at. Went and got a proper full year of S and C under my belt that first year down with Leitrim, and you know made a massive difference to me. You know hit the ground running straight away. You know doing well. I was happy enough for, uh, that year. I think I ended up playing centre forward that whole year. Uh, you know and it was really enjoyable. You know and you were testing yourself against you know inter county setups and and teams and you know I was learning. I was still learning like you know a lot. Uh, it was kind of you know first year in in county football. You know you. You literally kind of you're picking up stuff. You're you're learning up lads. You know I'd never been involved in a national league campaign as well, so mm. uh, it was really exciting. You know you were kind of buzzing with it all the whole time. Like you know mm. results might not went our way at that time, but uh, I remember kind of just thinking this is brilliant. You know mm. it was it was enjoyable. Like and uh, you know but there was a massive a massive connection there. Like look at it would have always been the every Leitrim game when I'm a young lad between Cavan or Leitrim there. Like my father would have brought me to every match from. 2000, you know, mm. uh, so it'd be a huge connection there. My uncles would be just stone mad, Leeds and supporters there. I have one of them there, he'd travel the length and breadth of the country there for his match on. He might not tell the wife now that he's gone to <laughs> he'd, uh, he'd be away, like, but, um, you know, they're, they're, there's a huge God there, like, you know, but then I ended up pushing on, yeah, but I ended up doing my third cruise sheet then, <laughs> uh, playing with Shannon Gales, actually. I remember it was, I think it was less than two weeks out, we were meant to play London in 18, it was no, 17, uh, yeah, in the Connacht Championship. And we were already kind of deflated with injuries. And I remember I went and played with Shannon Gales because we literally, we went up to a Nugent on a Sunday evening and we literally didn't have 15. And I didn't even oh, have gear with me. And I brought boot, I had boots in the back of the car and I remember putting the boots on and I went out and played. And I think it was Mark and Givney David that day in the middle of the field and we had a good old battle, but they were hammering us and we just didn't have numbers. And there was nothing we could do and had to play. It wasn't meant to be actually togged out, I don't think. And uh, it just shows like you should, it shouldn't have been nearly playing at all. But mm. uh, done the third cruciate and it just kind of finished me. It was a tough one to take now. It was kind of, you know, it was really, really gutted. I couldn't believe a third time. Kind of thought the, the head thought, head was gone anyway, but like really thought that was kind of the end of it. You know, really thought, no, and there, there's no comeback from this third cruciate. Like, but... Uh, you know, you you went away. You got back on back in the wagon with a uh, with the club and a couple of years there, hard S and C. Like you know, but obviously went away and then to Australia there for you know it was nearly two years gone. And we missed one year of club football because of the COVID the whole situation. But you know, kept, loaded looked after myself uh, when I was away. Would have done a lot of gym work too. Kept myself in good shape. Like, but you know, when I came back there as well from uh, Sydney, 
it was funny, like, you know, I uh, got the call then, James Clancy rang me, he's so about coming in, and uh, I said, like, I said, I think, he's, you know, I don't think I'd last, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. There's no way, I don't even think the body would be able for it, but, uh, you know, there was a few older lads there, uh, um, chatted to them, chatted a few boys, and, you know, delighted then, went in, you know, gave it a rattle, the body felt good. You know, look at this time of the year, different parts of the year there, definitely had problems, you know. Uh, but like you know, that's where your management team, your SNC, your your medical team come in, and you know when you have top top people working around you, um, it makes your life a lot easier as a player. You can kind of you know judge stuff better. They'll make better decisions, help you make better decisions for your body too. Kind of look after it. Like, but uh, it was good. You know, I really, really did enjoy it. Now look at those. There, there was definitely times in the year where my knees were struggling. Um, you know, I was, it was funny though. Like uh, Emily Mulligan, exactly, exact same. The time I done my third cruciate on the Sunday. He done his third cruise on the Tuesday night. I think oh, I trained. Jesus, yeah. I remember we were going to London and we were literally just looking at each other. We couldn't believe it. Um, it was a bit of a mad time because we were we were short on numbers as it was. I think going to that game, we had enough injuries going into it, but uh, we got the win on the over there. But uh, it was it was kind of mad, yeah. But look, I was delighted to get back. To be honest, when when Andy said it, look, he was going to keep me around the year. I was look delighted. You know, I didn't think I was ever going to get the chance again. Mm. Um, you know, kind of thought the body was kind of nearly done but mm. no as long as uh as long as the legs are holding up and i suppose i have something to add to the group i suppose look at i'll, I'll try <laughs> try and keep it going for another while Anya, you? you know but look at you come back then to the club and it's, it's an enjoyable scene too like you know um we're, go, we're going going all right there at the minute you know so look at it's uh it's it's just kind of trying to get as much out of myself as i can now you know i'm only yeah like, it's it's just been a it's it's when you're ter- three cruises in people would say oh well you know you're 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 kind of pushing on here you're kind of running out of time but like yeah kind of you kind of have to just maintain you just have to be a bit selfish with your own body at times yeah you have to kind of make hard calls sometimes where sometimes you just can't train sometimes you can't uh you can't do something extra going for <laughs> extra sessions there like yeah that. yeah you just make it work you know best you can you know I've been unlucky with bad injuries there for a while but uh you just kind of have to get on with it because. Uh, you've no other choice, <laughs> but you know it's been it's been enjoyable. Look at a bit of a, a bit of a mad career there for a while, but uh, yeah, it's been enjoyable. You know, mm. <clears throat> yeah, hundred percent. No, all them injuries it can't be. But I suppose you you do have to give your body time. You have to give the efficient amount of time. And obviously, look, you, you have a good, good few years left in the tank. Yeah, fingers crossed. Touch wood. So look, <laughs> you, you, you do you need you need to give yourself time. Yeah, yeah. No, no, look, at it, it, it's been enjoyable. Like, look at um, keeping looking after myself, trying to keep the body as best I can, keep the knees right, and, you know, see see what happens in the future. Andy could be ringing me up now and he could be telling me it's the start of the year to stay at home. You're getting, you're getting too old. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting too old and you're finished. <laughs> but, um, but, no, look, at that's kind of an it. Like, I'm playing away. But, look, at um, it, the big thing is as well, when I was injured, I was saying the whole thing, when I was injured, the big thing for me was I just took up coaching. I'm mad coaching, coaching yeah. you know. Uh, absolutely loved it, you know. Still coaching away as much as I can, uh, getting involved who, with my teams as I can. But who are you involved with these days? Or what? Uh, um, or, I was I was doing a lot of underage with the club there for long, but I've been I've been a couple of different clubs in and out with sessions. But um, I'm actually involved. I'm helping out with from Kieran there. That would have been my first club there. I would have played with in Leitrim. Um, you know, great group of lads up there. A um, couple of families still in the club, like so. It's it's enjoyable, you know. It's very hard to mix it now when you're playing. Obviously, when you're back at the club championship. It's 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 a juggling match, trying to be everywhere, you know. Maybe sometimes there's not enough nights in the week. Uh, mm-hmm. Trying to train yourself as well, like, but uh, you know, it's it, it, it's really good. Look, you enjoy that side of it too. You're trying to learn as much as you can off any setup you're involved with yeah. playing now, especially at a high level. You're trying to get as much out of it as you can, you know. Uh, any coach at all you'll meet, you you're trying to pick up little bits from them or. Or learn anything at all, you know. Um, but no, other than that, um, it's been good. Busy life, Nev. Busy I life, know. busy life. Yeah, you, yeah. You've had an interesting GA career, to say the least. That's why I was. <laughs> that's why I was so intrigued to get this done. Uh, and then uh, uh, the bit of traveling you've done. Any kind of future plans to go traveling again? Have you got the travel book ticked uh, off? Or um, I don't know. I don't know if it's ticked off. Like, look, there's, there's there's nearly too much to see when you get away. That's the problem. But like, uh, I'd never say never. Um, you know, but. Uh, look at it, great time away. You know, I was lucky there. Went over to Sydney. Like obviously, COVID um, affected some of it there. We were we were not fully locked up, but it did kind of close up on when you could go at certain times. And you know, maybe there was probably six months there where we were probably just stuck to Sydney. But um, it was really enjoyable. Like look at 
it's it, it was it was a great time went over like Dara um, met me over there McVitie that time he was traveling yeah. South America and he landed in Sydney so we had a great crew of lads over there uh, mm. mine landed for a while there a couple of other Leitrim lads there me on McQueenie there who had finished up uh, with Leitrim and he, he was in Sydney and met more lads like there's so many footballers there as well that was traveling and coming and going like you know what you know they they're the exact same. You know they were they were kind of in the bubble as well when you're home in intercounty football. Like it's it's just go 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 and it's constantly mm. every day you're thinking of the next training session, the next game, or what can I do? I'm eating all right, you know. And and it's nice to get away from that and have a bit of crack. Like and you know no matter who you go and meet, whether it's any lads from around Ireland, like you know we're all in the same the same boat. You know we're all doing the exact same stuff and you know mm. it's it's nice to be able to get away from it too. You know out of that out of that. As they say, bubble for a while, you know. It was it was a great experience. Got to see loads, um, but look at they're they're definitely hopefully might get a get away to see a few more things if I can at some stage. Um, mm. God knows when, but get away maybe at some stage. <laughs> <laughs> not getting not getting not getting any younger. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a few years left. Don't worry. You're, you're signing yourself off too early, my man. Um, and what, what's the crack? What what's the plan for the future? Just keep all away with Leitrim and Shannon Gales, or? Yeah, well, look, as, as long as uh, they want me at the middle, uh, I'll, I'll keep trying any. I see how the body reacts. And, uh, you know, tipping away, kind of, um, I'm at home, I'm actually in Black Lion at the minute based. I'm home only, I'm only home just over 12 months now. Yeah. Uh, so, like, it's been a quick 12 months since I came home. Uh, you know, time has absolutely been flying. Like, so That's it's been tough. busy. It's been it's been a crazy 12 months nearly when I think back on it all. Like, just been go, go, go between back into football. But look at yeah, you do it because you're enjoying it as well. Like you know, and that's that's the main thing. You know, there's no one putting a gun to your head or anything, forcing you to yeah. do anything. Like so, look good when you're here and you're enjoying it. That's the that's the main thing. Like you know, hundred percent, every hundred percent. Nice. Well, last two or three to ask you uh, before we jump. Um, what players are exciting at the minute? What uh, players would you be paying money in to see these? Days? Um. Probably a few well, obvious uh, candidates, I suppose. Few, yeah, the, I suppose being up at the uh, All Ireland final there, to be honest, watching the the Shane Walsh Clifford cameo or the experience was was outrageous. Yeah, you know, seeing the boys at it, like you know, look at um, they they've been quality. Like the two boys, like obviously there, there's you're you're seeing stuff there. You're seeing the lads doing stuff in games, and your boys are literally you're landing a train on the Tuesday night, and you're nearly thinking how how do they do that? You know, you're seeing young lads even going out to train and now yeah. they're nearly trying that stuff. Or they're seeing a certain dummy bounce or something that someone's done on the TV and they're they're going for it like but um you know a lot of quality like that there like there's there, there's a lot of young players like look at I, I love watching Reen O'Neill there from a man to be honest um I think he's quality there I love his striking there quality off the ground who kicking is top notch um you know uh, there's there's a lot of young lads coming there as well like even there like look at young Queeving there in our club. Is, is is quality there when he's getting mm. back at himself there now at the minute like you know you mm. you see you've seen him underage what he's been doing and you know there's quality there in all counties there even in Leeds from there young lads coming you know touch of class there you know and you 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 want lads to step on and uh, see how they do but you know, the big one there I suppose at the minute is uh, Arian O'Neill I think from our I've enjoyed him mm. Bit of eating raft there and goals as well. Watching him mm. doing a wee bit, bit of madness. I lived with eating in college there. So, <laughs> uh, eating some boy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. no, that's been kind of it. Like so far, you're not done yet. But so far, toughest player you played against and the best player you played with. Um, Jesus. Uh, this is where you fall out with lads. Yeah, I don't know now. I suppose the best player I've played against is Dermot Connolly. Uh, we played played Vincent's in uh, played Vincent's in up in Dublin there one time, and uh, it was a challenge match, and he was just outrageous. He was literally Sick. just dummy solo and left and right. He finished with one five, I think. He was unreal. Now uh, went out around the middle of the field there, or just stood beside him, running after him for a wee while there. It was literally having a fire agent him, but like uh, he was outrageous to be honest. Um, you know, he was really at himself too. But uh who else was there? American wise. There's been a few. Um Paddy McGuire there at Leachman, to be honest. He's one of the biggest he's one of the fastest lads there. He's been in a lot of quality now. Um, you know, he's he's hard handled. Um you know, I suppose there even at underage there we've been playing a lot there. Myself and mine I would have had a lot of battles with yeah. really take taking lumps into each other a bit underage, but uh you know, um, other than that, there is. Well, that's one trying to get me off the 
hook here, I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. But no, that's been probably it so far, I suppose. Um, yeah, I'd have to say Dermo. And maybe a bit of, a bit of Paddy Maguire there. Or if it was Katie and Clark or mine, I would have good battles with underage. It would have been hard, hard, hard handled too, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then you kind of pairs you admire it's it's a Daniel Goulding or some of them boys would have been that you would have looked up to. Uh yeah, yeah, a couple of lads there, a couple of lefties. Um always keeping an eye out for an odd lefty too, you know. Um yeah. a bit of quality, like especially free takes. They're the it's smart good. players. The lefties are the smart players. Yeah, yeah. We try and we try and get out a bit of work, you know, we're handy <laughs> to stay inside and just kick the freeze or something. But uh a few boys like that there, um, you know, you do. You look. I, I, I'd be a big player now, looking at lads there, especially for strikers with the ball there. Like, you know, we like obviously in each there you have a keep burn there, an unbelievable strike ball. Yeah. Ryan Rourke's. Um, like Emlyn Mulligan there when it first came through, he was a massive free taker. So we were always just kind of watching and learning, and taking as much as he can off them boys. Um, even Ray there with Calvin, you'd, you'd you'd watch a lot of what he does there, striking with the ball off the deck. Same yeah. as Ryan O'Neill. Um, stuff like that there, I'd be big on. I'd love, I love watching kind of forwards play strike of the ball i think is is unreal you know i love watching a forward there with a, it was a big strike you know yeah uh, but that'd be that'd be kind of big for me you know um mm. but no that's about it 100%. <laughs> there's a there's yeah. a book in you my man there's a book in you you, yeah, you have a good know. story and that story is going to keep <laughs> continuing man uh please oh. god all going well and injury free never donald yeah. thanks a million for joining me this week and of course the podcast is brought to you by orgaretch.com and attack today is your local jmac podcast to get 15 percent off on orgaretch.com and get the best skins gold scripting on attack today be attack minded mr donald you have a gym session to go to so we'll leave you to it thanks a million my man cheers donald thank you very much